How long can we keep an aquaponic system running without fish? This is what we're gonna see together in this video. So I have with me an aquaponic system and as you know I moved uh, all my uh, setups uh, one month ago. Uh, so I got two setups on one side and this setup here. Um, this one is actually empty without fish. I had trout before inside and now it's been empty for a while, more than a month. And uh, as you can see all the plants are still green and growing. So I want to respond to a few questions in this video. I want to explain you how the system is able to run without fish uh, and if you want to keep an aquaponic system without fish uh, what are the different options to make sure that the plants are going to keep growing without any problem. So first I want to explain you why I am in this situation, why some people may be interested to know how to uh, basically maintain an aquaponic system uh, growing well in terms of uh, plant production without any problem with uh, the fact that they don't have any fish. So I will explain you why you can face this situation is for example uh, if you live in an area in the world same as I do like here in Melbourne in the south of Australia um, the, the climate you know the weather conditions uh, in summer it's very warm while in winter it's very cold. So we have different options in terms of fish and I made uh, a few videos about this topic. I made videos about trout uh, and I, I recommend you to have a look at those videos and articles on the website Aquaponics Revolution. But when you grow trout in aquaponics, uh, trout like cold water. So that's fine in Melbourne in this area uh, during nine months of the year then during summer you always got two or one two or even three months depending on the years where you can have high temperature so uh, one of the options is to keep the trout in a, to keep the system in a shady area to avoid the temperature of the water to raise too much but the problem is when you do this you limit the production of the plants obviously so the other option is to grow the trout for nine months because that's a fish that can grow to plate size in nine months. It's a fish that grows extremely fast. And then at the end you harvest your fish and you remain uh, the rest of the year without fish or with other species of fish. So it can be applicable to you if you are living in the northern hemisphere as well. In Europe where I come from in France, that's exactly the same thing. In winter we got cold temperature and in summer we got very high temperature and so it would be very hard to keep the trout in summer. You can keep them but same you need to have uh, some specific uh, microclimate so you need to put a shed on it to avoid to have too much sun and too much heat into the water. So anyway this video is not about how to keep trout during winter but it's to explain you how you can still manage the aquaponic system even if you keep the system for few months without fish. So let me explain you what's happening in this aquaponic system here today. So we have an aquaponic system where all the plants are all green, but there was no fish for more than a month. So you may wonder how come the plants are still green and they are still able to grow without uh, the fish poop. The response uh, is quite simple. Here in the grow bed, you know this top part here is a grow bed, underneath here we got a fish tank, right? But this top part here is full of media, as you have seen in all my other videos. And this media here at Scoria, in between the rocks, uh, there is an accumulation of organic matters with time. So if you have an, an aquaponic system that is quite mature, you know, after nine months of production, you definitely have a quantity of organic matters. Then it depends on the quantity of fish that you have the way that you feed them, the temperature, a lot of, lot of criteria can influence the quantity of organic matter that you have trapped in your grow bed. But basically this grow bed is going to trap some of the fish pool, it's going to trap um, the roots of the vegetables, sometimes they may die a bit, you know, when you harvest something, so you still have some roots that are inside and there are some organic matters as well. 
Uh, you may have some leaves that fall on the crow bed. You may have some bacteria that, uh, you know, the bacteria are growing and they form what we call a biofilm, which is a viscous substance. And these remain in the system and when the bacteria die, they basically offer their body as a source of food for the other bacteria. So what I'm trying to say here is that basically we got a battery of uh, organic matters, a battery of food. It's like a reserve of food that is there. And even if you don't feed your fish every day, after a while, if you remove the fish and you keep the system without food, you still have a lot of food here in the aquaponic system. So it's not an issue to remain for a few weeks or a few months without food, depending on uh, the, the aquaponic system that you have and the quantity of fish that you had just before. So here, as you can see, all the plants are very green. Now the question is what is going to happen after one month, two months, three months when I basically use all the energy, or when I say energy, I mean all the food that is present in the grow bed. So at the present, we still have a lot of ammonia in the grow bed, so a lot of organic matter. This ammonia is going to be transformed in nitrate, and then it's going to be transformed in nitrate. And those nitrates, they are uh, the fertilizer for the plant. So we still have all this food with all the bacteria that are running and working on this. So now, if we want to keep the system running without fish for a while, without having too much deficiencies on the plants, or without having any deficiency on the plants, the first thing that we're going to miss in this grow bed is obviously minerals. But such as in a classic aquaponics, even when you have fish, you sometimes need to supplement in terms of minerals. So really the minerals, that's exactly the same thing as for an aquaponic system that is running with fish. But then you got uh, the, other, uh, the other thing that is going to miss. This is uh, nitrogen, the nitrate basically, the nitrate that has the food for the plants. So once the nitrate are used, all the nitrates that are present into the grow bed as organic matters at the present, once they are used and they are reduced, uh, you may see some deficiencies on the plant. So what you're going to do, you will have to add some nutrient to your water. So when you add some nutrients, you can add directly uh, into the water some uh, plant fertilizer. So it can be some sea soil, it can be any type of uh, fertilizer that is organic, right? You don't want to add anything nasty um, because you got some bacteria. What is going to happen is that you are not going to feed the bacteria if you do that. If you add uh, just nitrate, you are not going to feed the bacteria. You are just going to feed directly the plants. The plants are already directly going to be able to absorb uh, this nutrient. So here I, I see two problems doing this. Not problems, is not problems, but uh, I would say challenges or uh, cons. First, uh, when you put uh, nutrients into the water, and this is a fertilizer that you buy from the shop, it has a cost. It's not sustainable. It's coming from the other side of the planet, all those type of things, right? So first, it's not really cool for the permaculture side or sustainable side of the thing. Uh, the second problem that you may have in the future is that when you add nutrients under the form of nitrates directly for the plant, you are not giving any food to the bacteria. So the bacteria can't really uh, eat anything. And therefore, after a while, your population of bacteria is going to decrease. So that's one point. If you reintegrate fish, you will have to reintegrate them slowly or work from fingerlings, so small fish, then you can rebuild your population of bacteria, which is not an issue. But the first point for me, it's a bit of a disadvantage because it costs you money, it's not sustainable. So why don't you use something that the bacteria are going to be able to transform and something that is a waste for a system? So talking about this, uh, we have different options in a way to incorporate ammonia into our coponic system and one of the easy options is to add uh, animal manure. So I'm talking about animal poop. So it can be uh, from chicken, so that's what I can do here because I got chicken. It can be uh, pork, it can be a cow, it can be anything, right? You go to the shop, you can buy manure, but uh, you can very often get some uh, for free. It can be even from a dog or from a cat, right? Um, one of the things when you add the manure inside, you have to keep in mind that now you are working with very probably a warm blood animal, such as chicken or pig or cow. And those animals, they can, uh, they can have some bacteria inside their, um, their feces, 
inside the, the waste that are transmissible to humans. So I'm talking about bacteria uh, such as uh, Listeria monocytogenes, uh, bacteria such as E. coli, you know, Escherichia coli. Um, those bacteria, they can, they can, if you get them on your food and you don't cook the food, you don't clean the food and you don't cook the food, you can fall sick. And if you are uh, a person that is a bit fragile, you don't have a high immune system, and you're not often exposed to those bacteria, you can fall sick and it can be very, very bad. It can, can even kill people. So just be very careful at that. Um, when, if you take this option to add manure into your aquaponic system, if you add a warm blood manure in the aquaponic system, then you need to make sure that you will, um, you will clean the food before consuming it. And I would even recommend to cook the food to be 100% safe. Uh, most uh, of the farmers in the, in the world, when they have a uh, pork menu, they, then they spray it in the field, right? And uh, it's, it's common practice, but uh, here that's plants that we are going to consume directly. So you have to, to, to get this in mind. When we are working with fish, it's totally different because the fish, they are cold blood animals and there is no disease that can be transmitted from the fish to human. That's why I think aquaponics is amazing because the food is completely safe and you can consume it when it's raw. And that's when you have, when you, can, when you are able to consume all the good, uh, all the vitamins of the plant, all the positive nutrients of the plant. So you know now that you can keep your aquaponic system empty of fish for a few months without big problems. I don't really, recommend uh, keeping your system empty for too long. I think aquaponics is a really good way of producing food, so you should basically use this technique as much as possible. But if it's just for a few months, that's not an issue. If you are a beginner and you are interested by aquaponics, I recommend you to get the free aquaponics training from the description of the video just below or in the eye like information somewhere on the corner of this video. It's a free step-by-step -step training to help you to build your own aquaponic system, but also to manage it in the best way possible. So it's going to avoid you all the beginner's mistakes that we often see. It's going to avoid you to basically kill the fish or make a big mistake in the conception of the system or in the maintenance of the system. Um, so again, it's completely free, so get it in, in the description of the video just below. If you enjoy those videos and if you learn something, you can subscribe to the channel uh, I release video quite frequently to help you to grow sustainable, healthy and tasty food at home thanks to aquaponics. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. It really supports the channel. And if anything is unclear or if you have any comment to add, there is a comment section that is made for this purpose. So please give me your feedback and I will be very happy to respond to you. I see you in the next video. Bye bye. Don't forget to get your free gift from this screen. You can also leave me a comment below the video, subscribe to the channel and see my last video. I really hope to see you soon and I wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics. Have a good crop!